Episode 2 of Just Create. That was me channeling my inner Peter McKinnon. And if you don't know who that is, uh, that is a guy that you should look up for tips, tricks, and techniques when it comes to photography and cinema photography stuff. The dude is killer. The guy went to a million subscribers like in a matter of one year on his YouTube channel. Just unreal. But uh, anyway, I digress. Welcome to episode two. I really am looking forward to this episode. We got a lot of great, great things going. First, we're going to talk about uh, what's a video you can do now, yourself or professionally. Uh, what's a video that you can do now that your business absolutely needs? Also, we're going to be talking to uh, uh, to Kickstagram. Uh, awesome guys. We're going to talk about how to be able to use your Instagram content to be able to help channel leads into your business. So really looking forward to it. But let's get this started. Let's get this kicked off. Uh, and this whole show is all in the premise of being able to help how to use video for your business. And so I'm going to give you one little tip here uh, today. We're going to talk about what is a video that you can do now that uh, is extremely important for your business. And that would be testimonials. Now, I know, I know. All of you are probably going to be like, well, I do those testimonials and I do that. I mean, if, duh, like, like what kind of new information is that? Well, listen here. I, I really hate to be the guy to tell you, like, I hate to be the guy to tell you how to do your testimonial videos, but I'm going to be that guy to tell you how to do those testimonial videos. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're going to dive into today is how to properly do your testimonial videos, how important they are, and, and how to really tell that story. So without further ado, let's get this thing started. Testimonial videos, how many people do them? Obviously, if you don't do them, it is a must need. And uh, for people that you do do them, this is going to be a great information. And it's something that I want you to engage with, okay? Because what I'm about to say and what I'm about to, to, to tell you you may not agree with, and that's okay, but uh, definitely love to hear uh, some feedback on what your thoughts are and what we discussed today. So testimonial videos. Uh, you know, I find a lot of people doing testimonial videos, especially for people that do your events, you know, your, your speaker events, things like that. They seem to have this idea that they need to collect 20 to 30 different testimonials at this event that, that they're putting on and, and that type of thing. Or or people have this idea that we need to be able to ramrod people through um, into testimonials. And I'm here to tell you, number one, I don't think that is, if, number one, efficient and, and effective of what you might think would be effective. First of all, when's the last time you've ever sat on someone's website and listened to 20 different testimonials? I'm serious. Like, that's just, that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff to listen to. And, and, and especially when you're busting through people like that. And a lot of these testimonial videos I hear is, oh, it's such a great event. And, oh, it was just awesome. But, but never really diving into like how, what it was all about and why was it so great for that person. So with everything that we do and every type of video that we do, there's a real similar thing theme that we want to follow and that's telling a story and what are the three components of being able to tell the story in the beginning it's your opening and then in the middle you have your conflict and then in the ending is your resolution finding that solution for that uh for the ending you know so um you kind of want to keep that in mind when you're doing your testimonials now testimonials i really believe is going to be more effective when you do quality testimonials versus quantity of testimonials. And so when you're really looking into it, I highly suggest two to three people. That's it. That's all you really need. But you're going to spend some time with these two to three people and and really trying to dive deep into 
what your service or your event or your product, how it really affected them. It's about them telling their story versus telling about how you have such an amazing product or your event is so amazing. So amazing. Like none of that. Like we don't need we, people don't need to hear that. How many times do we are on Facebook and you're going through these ads and another event shows up and they and every single person says the same thing and how amazing an event is. How do you know which event is actually amazing or not? So testimonials gives you that gives you obviously uh, instant credibility. But diving into these people's stories is where the meats and potatoes happen and, and really where people feel connected. So kind of circling around here, um, test, when you're doing your testimonial videos, you really want to be able to set it up in a fashion where you have it, where you bring the person out from whatever's happening in it and putting that person into a particular room, a comfortable sitting position or whatever the case may be. Put it into where it's quiet as best as you can. So that way you can get real intimate with that person and feel very comfortable. They're already going to feel very nervous about it, but you're going to help them by leading them questions and you're going to help them by leading in certain open ended questions to help them tell their story. Because a lot of times they don't understand what to say, but you're going to help them with that. And I'm going to show you how to help them with that. Once again, we're following the, the theme of a story, the story of having the opening. So who is this person and what do they do? Where are they from? And, you know, so we want to be able to sit down and talk to them and say, hey, you know, tell me who you are. What do you do and, and where you're from? That gets them very comfortable to begin with. So you have that opening storyline of and setting the scene for who this individual is. And then it comes into where where I think where the magic happens is now after you establish that, let's talk about their conflict. And that could be as serious of someone's life's life changing experience when if they're they're, you know, having a struggle with suicidal issues and then all of a sudden this event changed their their life and it saved their lives. Or it could be as simple as, look, I'm a photographer. I was dealing with, you know, so many uh, issues of my cables getting pulled out and now I bought this product in it and it allows it to where it doesn't you know, it keeps my keeps my cables together. And so it could be a, it doesn't have to be as dramatic as possible, but you really want to let the customer or let the person that you're interviewing with for the testimonial. You really want them to let them tell their story. So how you do that? You're going to ask them different questions. So what were some things that you were struggling with prior to this? What how was that causing you? You know, what what? not only with that struggle, but how was that causing, how would that make you feel? What kind of stress was that putting on, putting on you at that time? What was that causing with your family members? Really dig in on how it made them feel emotion, build that emotion. Um, you know, it, it, did you ever think that there would ever be a solution? You know, how bad was it getting when, it, it, when you feel like there was no you know, answer to your problem. And so you let them digest those questions and allow them to be able to really speak on how they feel. They may cry, they may laugh, but that's okay. That's the emotion that you're really trying to set in these testimonials. And then from by, to, by really digging into that conflict, and having them explain what that conflict is, then they're going to be able to tell them how they came up to a resolution. You know, how did your service be able to provide and change their lives? What is their life like now? You know, how much happier are they now? What is it that they're doing now that's so far different than what was previously before using your product or using your service? So these are things that you really want to kind of think about when you're when you're dealing with testimonials. Number one, it's about quality over quantity. Number two, being able to stick to that storyline. You have the beginning, you have your conflict, and you have your resolution, which is the ending. You know, follow that script, follow that structure. And then three, continue to ask open-ended questions. 
what were they doing? Why was it? Why is a great, great way to be able to dig deeper into it. Why was that making you feel that way? What was that doing for your family? Why was that? Why was your family reacting that way? I mean, just different things that allow you to make it allow you allow the 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 person that is talking allow them to be able to go deeper into how they're actually feeling because a lot of times they just don't they don't know exactly what to say unless prompted with the right questions and you want to make sure that you're actively listening and so you could have some great follow-up questions with that testimony videos are extremely important to your business it allows it builds authority it builds authenticity um, it builds uh, 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 credibility to your company um, and it is something that you could be doing now using them now either be doing it on your own where you're setting it up an iPhone just make sure that you set it up to be a very nice looking shot now making sure it's it's in, a, in an area where it's quiet and you could be able to really dive in or it's something I highly encourage is that if you are in a position where you can be able to invest some money into a professional company, that is something that I highly suggest that you do uh, is to do is to create a really a high end dynamic testimonial video into some into someone. And so, um, you know, if you're looking for examples, um, I'll send I'll put some couple of links of what some dynamic testimonial videos will look like for you. I'll put in a link uh, in the uh, into the comment section below. And so you're more than welcome to take a look at uh, what I mean by creating a, a professional, high, highly dynamic testimonial video for your company. But uh, anyway, guys, that's uh, that's it for for that little suggestion. But uh, um, coming up next is uh, Kickstagram. Uh, Casey and Ronan, you guys are gonna love them. If you guys don't know who they are, you're gonna definitely want to stick around and find out what Kickstagram is all about. So I'll talk to you soon. I think that's the music is playing. Gotta go. All right, and we're back, and thank you very much again for uh, joining us. I'm really excited about introducing to these uh, two these two guys here, man. They're great. They a, they created this uh, service. They created this business uh, called Kickstagram. Uh, their name is Casey and Ronan, and I wanted to definitely introduce you and, and get some really good content from them. And um, and so, without further ado, without further ado, here they are, Casey and Ronan. And uh, how are you guys doing, man? Good. How are you doing, Thomas? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Hey, th first of all, thank you very much for joining us on uh, episode two here. This is really exciting. I mean, you know, I know, like I mentioned to you guys before, the biggest thing I've always wanted to do was try to bring in business owners, creatives, um, people that create content, that distribute content, and just really help utilize, especially in today's entrepreneurial mindset and, and, the, and, and the environment that we're in, and really try to focus on how to use video and distribute video and how to use it for their business. And and when I first met you guys, the service that you guys offer, it's, it's really kind of goes hand in hand because it is it is the way to be able to distribute that content and be able to drive business. And so, um, without, like I said, without further ado, you guys, I want to, to, uh, instead of me explaining it, you know, explain it to the viewers out there, what you guys do, who you guys are and how you guys got started. Yeah. So we're, we're Kickstagram. We actually got started. Um, Casey and I, the actual company was started in 2012. We started, uh, actually, uh, out in China doing some uh, sourcing and, and international trading and uh, through that come fast forward to about 2014-2015 um, through working with a lot of e-commerce clients, a lot of Kickstarter clients, um, we found there was just a massive need for them once they you know, developed their product, how are they going to sell with no retail contacts and the natural thing was uh, the internet, of course, and at that same time, in things like Instagram and Facebook were really taking off. And so Casey was sitting there actually uh, on behalf of one of our clients one day, 
sitting there on Instagram liking photos, writing comments, you know, engaging with other uh, users who might like the product. It was a watch company. And, uh, you know, he just saw some great initial feedback and results. And, and from that, he said, hey, Ronan, like, let's, let's try this. And, of course, you know, being younger, we we're, we're definitely willing to try it out and, and see what worked. And, uh, you know, it was a great way that we asked – you know, a couple of our clients, would they use the service? And they said yes. And then it went from one client to five clients to 10 clients. And, you know, fast forward to 2017, uh, November, we're sitting at just close to a thousand clients now. So it's, um, wow. you know, it wasn't the, we didn't set out with the initial thing like, hey, we're going to do Instagram marketing for, for uh, e commerce brands or, or business owners or anything like that. It was just kind of part of the entrepreneurial journey. And we kind of, um, you know, landed on our feet. Wow. Uh, no, that's pretty amazing. And so how long you guys had this journey going on again? I mean, we both, we started working together in about 2012, but it's been about three years now that Kickstagram has been around. So it's nice thing is going into this, uh, you know, entrepreneurial journey, Ron and I known each other for a long time, all the way back actually until high, high school, where we played a lot of poker together. We played football together. So we've been friends for a long time and you know, the interesting thing, everyone says, don't mix friends and business. And I get that. <laughs> but at the same time, if you have a friend that you understand each other's, you know, your strengths, your weaknesses, and you can both have conversations and get through any of the pain points, it's, it's really rewarding to do this with your friends. No, that's fantastic. And you've got, you guys have really have grown. I mean, even just the first time that I met you, uh, what was it? This, just this last year, um, mm -hmm. You know the the amount of expansion you guys have gone through it's it's really really tremendous on seeing the growth that you've guys done since since even when i met you and um it's pretty amazing so i kind of want to di really dive into how how your service works what can people do to to really increase their presence and bring on their online content so first like tell like how does your service particular work in when they sign up for your for your guys' stuff? Like, what could they expect? Yes, yeah, right. So a lot of, you work with a lot of brands and social media managers to kind of help grow either their Instagram account or their client's Instagram's account. So when they sign up, they're, they're paired with an account manager who will kind of go through an Instagram audit, if you will, or a, an onboarding call to kind of tell them, you know, what's working currently for their Instagram and also provide strategy on what else they need to do. Um, a lot of the time, just, you know, it's all about the content. You know, some people think there's a magic bullet to get to 100,000 followers. And unfortunately, um, there just isn't one. You can use tools like ours, but, you know, on top of that, you can use, you know, high quality content, you're posting consistently, and then doing other things at a higher level, such as, uh, influencer marketing or, you know, running contests on Instagram, things like that. So it's kind of a whole, um, a wholesome aspect or strategy, if you will, to really growing an Instagram account. And that's why there's a company like ours to kind of help brands and, and social media managers do that. And I guess like one of the big values we bring as well is we fill this void where a lot of people know they should have Instagram or want to run an Instagram and they see these tools or these things, but they're doing like Ronan said they're not creating content well or they just don't really know how Instagram works in general and those are some of the clients we probably help the most because when they come on come on and sign up like Ronan said they get an account manager they get to talk to someone they get to you know we'll go through their content we'll go through their strategies and really it's a two-way street you know as we can drive as much traffic or as much potential clients or followers to your Instagram page as possible but if your page isn't optimized and ready for those people to land on it it's not going to do much good. So we've really tried to fill that void or provide that type of service as well, which, you know, is, is kind of a rewarding aspect when we see some of our clients that come to us initially, how their page looks to like a month or two later when they're really starting to create content and just create quality stuff that actually people are receptive to. Exactly. And do you see a trend where, where um, people are going to be more apt to more of the quality type creation of content? versus you know the 
the the generic way of doing things or way it used to be. I mean, like we have Instagram stories now, you know, there's Snapchat and there's always that little snippet of videos. But but when it comes to trying to drive traffic, do you see there's a there's a trend now that people are really going more towards places that are that 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 provide that really the professional work versus just your everyday, you know, iPhone pictures or videos or and then not only that but like do you see when people do see their instagram account it may be filled with a bunch of iphone pictures but when they go to somewhere else you know the importance of having that professional base content of video and like where, where do you see the most successes in that you guys see in those trends yeah i mean hands down the clients that that have the most success on instagram are the ones who invest a lot of time, effort, and obviously money into their content, right? So they, they're the ones who realize, even though Instagram or Facebook or Twitter posting to these sites is free, you know, if we just take, you know, a, an iPhone um, photo of the watch, it's, it's not gonna do the watch, you know, a, a service, right, or justice. Yeah. You know, it's when you put on like that professional photographer with, with the cool flat lays or the background or, or, you know, the editing, that's when that, that, that watch really comes to life. You know what I mean? And that yeah. will entice the user to buy. So, you know, it, when people and brands get that and understand that like the content and the, the quality of it is the number one um, priority, you know, it, 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 everything else becomes so much easier. No, that's great. That's great. And where do you guys see now? Obviously, this is very um, video based on how to use video, right? Um, it, 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 for people's businesses, and and I know I've been trying to create different, you know, your one minute quick sizzles or quick, just different content of high quality video that you could post on your on your Instagram. Do you see a trend where does that help uptake different viewership with people's accounts by using video versus pictures or is there, is there been a more success rate with video? What, what do you guys see on that regards? Yeah. I mean, hundred percent video is, is taking over. I mean, when it comes to marketing and content in general, I think Instagram learned a lot from Snapchat. They saw a popular and quick Snapchat guy and, <laughs> you know, just doggy photo. ears, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. With all the filters and whatnot, but, Honestly, like all these platforms, social media platforms, their main goal is to have users on them, but also to be on them for a long amount of time and be engaging. And I think that was the biggest thing Instagram realized they're losing out on video where it's a longer form of engagement. Um, you know, users are on there more, can take up more of their time. And that's the end goal for these social media platforms is have you on their platforms for as long as possible. And video kind of really uh, bridges that gap of just pictures and scrolling through to actually sitting there and watching something. I was reading something recently that, you know, video, one in five videos someone posts on Instagram usually results in a direct message back from their follower. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And half, a lot of that has to do with obviously us as humans liking video, but also Instagram's pushing video so much to get those people from Snapchat over to Instagram. And they're allowing you, if you make video, create video to kind of boost your post, boost your video a little bit higher than they'd boost a, you know, a photo per se, and all that kind of goes, has a snowball effect to where you're creating quality videos, you're also getting help from Instagram because they're trying to promote videos, and then as well, uh, like us as users, enjoy videos. So it's it's a perfect storm of that, all these different variables coming into play. Um, yeah, I mean, they're releasing features left and right when it comes to video. Now, I think just a few days ago, or maybe even yesterday, you can now post a video that you actually took um, you know, in the past, before it had to be a live video and whatnot, you can go into your archive and, and post a video from the past, which is huge. And you can download videos, you know, your stories, you can, you can do a lot of things, add a lot more effects. So they really are under Instagram's understanding how important video is for the future of their platform. And as anyone that's an e-commerce company or just a influencer or creator, I would highly suggest to either get better at video or find someone that's really great at video to tell your stories, a compelling story of that. Right. And exactly. And that's kind of like one of the biggest things that I always try to like, uh, it, it's always that ongoing creation of content and, and, and there's going to be things that we create that 
you know, it, you can't just hire. You have to do it within your house, you know, because you want mm -hmm. to create on a daily. And then, uh, but then there's also that level of bringing in that professional work, and it's just understanding when that time comes. Now, I know you guys, you guys do your kind of like own in-house of stuff where you create a lot of different uh, tutorial videos or, or educational type stuff where people can go on your website learn a little bit more or go on your Instagram is it, so tell me a little bit about that process and and you know I know you got a team together and uh, they you know they do great work and it's you know there's not like they're professionals on it but they put their time and effort in it and it's amazing how much improvement like how did that start and and what, what was that process like yeah I mean you know as a startup I guess it, it, it's kind of it's kind of cool because there's not such a uh, rigid structure as far as jobs and responsibilities. You know, there's a lot of people who wear a lot of hats and it, that changes on, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you know, and a lot of the people who have been here since day one, you know, they initially started out and say things like customer service. Uh, but then through that, they adapted and learned some marketing automation. Same other people learned how to create and edit um, videos to then post onto YouTube, like you were saying, for tutorials. Uh, same thing, well, we needed like some graphic design work. Mm -hmm. uh, they were able to, they took the initiative to then jump on Photoshop, kind of learn the basics and, and get some fundamentals down to help us kind of push out that content and things like that. So it's just really been them coming in day in and day out having certain responsibilities and then kind of building on those responsibilities to uh, add skills as, as kind of uh, young professionals, if you will. Exactly. Now, um, uh, what were you about to say, Casey? I was just going to piggyback and like you're like on top, like specifically the video, we, you know, we had an account manager that, you know, she, when we actually hired her initially, which was kind of cool, we asked all, we asked all the candidates to film a one minute video about themselves and hers like blew us. Her name. <laughs> Alexander Lee and hers blew us away and we we're like wow this is amazing on top of her being hopefully a great account manager and understanding Instagram she definitely has some video skills so she kind of headed that and then we had a couple of other account managers that have been here longer able to like write the scripts and it was a collaborative effort but the nice thing about video and as you know it's you know you can create it once and it's reusable content so on that YouTube we always get clients now I have noticed it's building up now we've covered a lot of topics on our channel where they'll be like do you know you know can I see any uh, do you have any more information on creating good content or how to optimize your bio and you know we have these videos saved up now to where it's really easy and as we create a dashboard we're really gonna try to continue this and have a you know an archive of, of videos or resources where Current clients, even you know, they don't even have to ask. They might just be scrolling through our dashboard and land on this uh, video resources page and have all this at their fingertips. When in reality, as you grow, that's really powerful because you only took so much time to create it, but it can affect so many people. Right, and I think you know, in my last my last show, I, we kind of talked about it. It really, it's something that it, 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 it it's a legacy type of thing, or it. it <laughs> it lasts forever, right? And so it is pretty amazing the engagement that the more and the more you do, then all those past videos that you've done before, you're gonna get more viewership on those because people are gonna to continue to search back in the past and and uh, you still have that content that you built and it's just, it's like a snowball effect. It just keeps on growing and growing and growing the more and more you, that you do. Yeah, um, it's, it's pretty amazing. Now, one of the things that I find really, really, really fascinating and, and and the trend of way that Instagram has been going, it's it's like there's two parts of Instagram. There's like the picture side and then the, the Instagram story side, right? I mean, it, I, and I know they're trying to do that to compete with Snapchat and, and that type of thing. What do you, what's the most effective way to do the Instagram stories that you guys see? Um, is it something that is, it is highly powerful? Tell me, tell me what you guys, what your thoughts are on and, and how to utilize that Instagram story as a, as a really a powerful tool to, to engage and, and, and have people find you. Yeah, I mean, like you were saying earlier, the, you know, with the being a minute limit and the snapshot of just the story aspect, obviously when you, or when you post a video, or uh, the stories is even shorter, but the, like when you post a video on your page, you have so, so much amount of time. So you're kind of really trying to engage your followers really quickly and show them either 
the snapshot of the bigger video that you're doing or some of the more compelling things we see is if you're creating something or some type of tangible good, giving people an insight on how you make it. People like insights, showing the culture of your company or just showing your your product or service in use. You know, those are some three really powerful ways to tell a compelling story and get people interested in what you're doing. But if you have a longer video and you edit it down, another thing you do is put a link to your page or wherever that video is featured for the full length version. And that's a, something we've seen some of our clients have success with as well is they post, you know, the highlights of a video, grab their attention and whatnot. And a lot of videos sound is great and everything, but another thing to try if you're creating videos is have a, have a video that works with sound or not sound. Because if it works without sound and they're not listening initially, and it's even better with sound, great. They click onto it. But sometimes videos are really dependent on sound and a lot of people on their phone might not uh, actually be listening. So that's some that's something, a little tip that, that uh, we've noticed. That's a great point. I never really thought of that because there are times where people want to look at stuff, but they're in a situation or they're in a room where you can't turn the sound on or you can't listen to it, but they're still, you know, still searching through your stuff or, you know, searching and, that's a really good point. I never thought of that. That, that that's, yeah. that's really amazing. And there's a lot of different ways, obviously, you can do stuff without sound. I mean, it, I know sound's really important, but, you know, if it's if it's uh, text overlay to tell the story in the, in the, in the video, video or footage behind the scenes, really tells it with the text and you don't really have to hear as much or, or uh, just, you know, beautiful aesthetics or stuff like that, you know, obviously going to catch your eye without sound. But, but yeah, there, it's a... Uh, I would just always start creating these videos. Like you're saying, it's a snowball effect. The more followers and more people you have, the more ROI you're gonna get on these content creations and the more money you can spend. But if you start the process initially, I think you, you get a lot of great feedback from your followers or your customers in general. And then you can kind of start spending more money as your company grows. But implementing that as a core foundation of your content creation at an early stage, I do think is important. Uh, that's great. Now, because of you guys, I, 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 and I got my family now turned on them. But I, I, I remember the last time that we met up, I asked you, I was like, dude, who's, who are some freaking hilarious people to follow? And you gave me two people that, that was the bucket list family and then the, the bread face blog, which, by the way, that's so freaking creepy. I, the bread face blog. I can't, I can't get over it. <laughs> Every time she does a live video, I'm clicking on it. What, what the heck? Like, <laughs> it's amazing. We're in a big world right now, and everyone can, you know, everyone can get a microphone or or uh, be on be on camera if they want now. So, yeah, if you can find a niche, you know, and, and can, you know, consistently create content around that niche and, and towards that audience, you know, who knows, you know, where it'll lead you, right? Like, you know, yeah. it's such a time we're living in a time where people can literally make hundreds of thousands of dollars from creating content, you know, from their phone, uh, just around whatever they want to feel like talking about. It, it's crazy. And I think it's like we're living that time where everyone become can become their own reality star. I mean, it's just Definitely. it's just what it is. Um, now, the is there any new things that you guys come across that you've been following that uh, that we should uh, should start taking a look at that kind of that you find that's just just weird? <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to put it, but a weird, unique thing. Uh, not that I can think of. Not nothing compared to you know the two that we gave you earlier. Man, yeah. if, if I do, I'll, I'll be sure to send them your way. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, and like that bucket list family. Like I, I swear to God, I, I had no, no yeah, idea about them. Now my kids follow them. And they're all watching, and I, I, I'm, I can never be as good as dad as that guy. Now, I, it, 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 they ruined me. <laughs> I know. I, I should have never showed my girlfriend either. <laughs> my, my lifestyle I'm going to provide to her. It's pretty hard to top that one. Well, Ronan does traveling a lot. I mean, where's, where's, where's your vlogging at? Well, you travel all over the damn world. Oh, and I, I should. I should. Maybe I can make some money off that too, right? <laughs> you got it. You know, I use your guys' service. It is tremendous amount of, of success with it. It's really amazing. It really has kind of expanded my reach as well. Um, but uh, kind of tell people where could they find you? Um, and, and what's, it, I, to me, like, I feel like you guys are much different than, like, other services that are out there. And they may be bots, things like that, because you guys really do work 
for the client. And and so yeah. um, to kind of like tell us, tell us a, I, I, before you tell where people where you can find you, but like there's so many differences that you guys do that it's just, it's really worth the investment in that service. Yeah, I think that the, the definitely the biggest factor is the fact that we have account managers um, for each client to not only help them uh, you know, get on board and set up with us, but also to provide them advice, you know, uh, whenever needed as far as Instagram strategy. So it almost acts as kind of like their, uh, um, their outsourced social, social media manager, if you will, um, to kind of, because their success ultimately is our success as well. The better they do on Instagram, the longer they'll be with us. So that's kind of the approach we take and, and always trying to keep the customer happy. Yeah, that's I think, uh, any ideal, like an ideal client is really anyone that's, you know, on social media already that either has used Instagram and feel like they're putting a lot of effort into it and not seeing a lot of results or they want to start using Instagram, either one, because um, we've had so many clients that actually already make great content, but kind of like SEO when it comes to a website, if no one's going to your page, how's anyone going to buy it? So we really help get you over that hump of driving relevant traffic and that's kind of the key with us on top of making sure your page is optimized we we're going to really push to get those right people to your page to your instagram account page and you know when you're doing all the things right it's, the results are really great we have some awesome case studies and just see some really good consistent results so it's always you know anyone can either go to our website at kickstagram.io or you know if you just look Google Kickstagram, you'll come across as well, but you can give a call in, like there's a human that'll talk to you and you can find out if it's a good fit for you or either currently or something you're looking to do in the future, we can talk about that as well. But um, it's a it's a great tool to have in your, you know, your toolbox for sure. That's awesome, guys. No, and seriously, I, you guys are fantastic. I, I once again just want to say thank you. And uh, I know that you guys are probably, the weather is just killer out there in San Diego freaking jealous about that and being able to, I kid you not guys like the, these guys are over at in san diego right in downtown it's just a beautiful spot they're right there by petco park and it's petco park right yeah right yeah yeah petco yeah. park and guys it's a great great place uh that they're in and i'm just sometimes i'm definitely jealous and hate you for that but you guys are the best and i appreciate you guys coming in what's up brother that you can visit whenever you want. Definitely, most definitely. I'll be I'll be heading out there. Hopefully, I get out there this sometime before end of this year. So I'll let you guys know. But uh, hey, thank you very much for taking your time, guys. Take a look at Kickstagram and uh, uh, with Casey and Ronan. Uh, they're just fantastic service. I appreciate you guys coming on and giving us some providing some amazing content here and how to really utilize and distribute your guys's different ways to be able to draw and and and. and in, in bringing in that influence and, um, and use it for your business. So um, stay tuned. We'll come right back to wrap things up. All right. Well, thank you very much again for uh, joining us. Uh, that really concludes episode two. Um, I Just to wrap things up, I really want to say thank you to Casey and Ronan for joining us today um, and really providing some uh, fantastic content when it comes to uh, different ways of thinking, how to be able to use your Instagram and your Instagram stories um, and, and how important it is to always create that video content on a daily basis. And, and the more that you the more that you make, the more that the other stuff that you've made previously is going to get viewed. It's just a set. It's that snowball effect that, that we were talking about already. Um, but, uh, you know, I also you keep in mind, I mean, when we're talking about testimonials, it's I think the biggest key where a lot of people lose is that it's not about the quantity of, of testimonials or videos that you're trying to do when it comes to getting those. Um, but it's it's about the quality, you know, um, and it's putting in a position where you really allow the person that you're having the testimonial done, being able to really dive in to what their struggle was. And then how did that how did your product or your service help 
change that for them. And uh, just to give you an example, it was for a um, for a speaker, and uh, he had this huge event out, and had an individual there that came and 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 experienced this really life changing mindset event. Um, and you wouldn't know about that until you actually heard her story. And in that testimonial, she was talking about the struggles that she was having in her life, extreme struggles to where, you know, she really needed, she was about to hit rock bottom. And one of the biggest heartfelt and emotional parts of what she said in her testimonial was that because of that event, it saved her life. It didn't just change her life. She said it saved her life. And, and, and it's, what an amazing, amazing story to share and to be able to use of and, and throw that out there for everyone to hear. Because those are the th- stories. Those are the people. People want to be able to relate and be able to see if they can relate to whatever it is that you're, you're throwing out there. Like I said, a product, an event, a service, whatever the case may be. Um, but those are the those are how powerful uh, those testimonials can work and and for your business. And so um, if you have any questions, uh, any comments, like I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on on the idea of quality versus quantity when it comes to testimonials. I'll be more than happy to kind of you know, I'd love to be able to get engaged with that. Um, and uh, and also, if you have any other additional thoughts and if there's other videos that you like to know about how to use what other if there's specific videos that you think about uh, that you want to be able to learn how to use for your business, write them down below and we'll definitely do a, a segment on it. But uh, anyway, guys, till next time, I'll see you later. And, and there's my cue. There's that music again. Got to go.